Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part 10 of my message box series. Today, we're going to make your message box go beep. And if you don't want just one beep, we're going to make it go beep, 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 beep. As many beeps as you want. I know it sounds silly because you can just put a beep command in there, but if you want multiple beeps, there's a trick I'm going to show you. So stay tuned. Here we go. Oh, yeah, 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 right, right, right. This is part 10. So if you haven't watched parts one through nine, go watch parts one through nine first, then come on back. All right, our message box is getting pretty good. We can move it around. We can change colors. We can change font. We can put these pretty little boxes on here, the icons, whatever we did in the last part. All right, what if you want this thing to beep when it opens up? And you want that to be an option, not just always beeping, right? Well, it should be second nature now how to add options to our boxes, right? So let's go to the global module. Let's find the call to the function right here. We're gonna add another option in here, optional. Let's call it beeps as along, and the default will be zero, no beep, okay? Add it down here on the bottom. You gotta send it to the arguments, right? Copy, paste, and then we'll grab beeps and put beeps down here and here. All right, we've done this, what, a dozen times so far? Well, not a dozen. We've done this 10 times so far. <laughs> All right, save it. Let's go to our function call. So it's going to be in here where it comes in, right? And we're going to say we'll do it after the icon here. We'll say case beeps. Now, if we send it one beep, no problem. If we send it three beeps, we need a loop counter, right? We got a loop. So let's come up top here and, and add another variable. So we got X as long, and then we're gonna put in here Y as long as well. X, Y, Z, they're your typical loop counter variables, right? That goes way back to my, my TRS-80 Coco basic programming days. So for Y equals one, two, name value one. And then in here, we're gonna beep and then we're gonna say next. All right, let's save it. Throw in a debug compile. Let's come back out here. And let's update our uh, main menu call, right? Main menu F and come down here. And right after this, we'll put one for our beeps. Save it and click the button. There's our beep. Okay, pretty cool. Let's do three beeps. Save it, hit the button. I only still heard, I only heard one beep. What's going on here? Let's try uh, let's try ten beeps. See what happens. I only, see the problem with beep is they all get sent almost immediately to the the beep machine, whatever in the computer makes the beep, right? And without any spacing between them, it all sounds like one beep. Sometimes you might hear like a and and get like five of them real fast. So we need to put a pause in our code. So back to here, right in here, we got to sleep a little bit. All right, there's a function we can use called sleep. All right, and I got a video that explains exactly how to use this. And on this page, this is one of those uh, items in my code vault that is usually reserved for the members, right? But this one's free for everyone. So you can actually go in the code vault and get this one. So go to this page down here, scan the QR code or just type in sleep after my domain, right? Take you to my sleep page. Come right down here. Free source code. Yay, it's free source code. It's free source code day. Everyone gets, you get some free source code and you get some free source code. Just click on that. All right, now there's this whole thing. I, all you really need is this one line right here, okay, to use the sleep function. I wrote a little helper function that goes with it called sleep seconds where you can specify a number of seconds. If you say like 10 seconds, it'll sleep and it, it does it in one second intervals because these are milliseconds, right? So this just... It pauses for 10 seconds, but it puts breaks in the middle in case the user hits cancel or something and it, and it allow other, allows other code to run. Watch the other video. It'll explain how this works. But all we really need is this right here. Just this one line of code. Just copy that. Copy. Come back over here to your database. You're going to go in your global module. Global module. And um, here it's already in here. Okay. If you are using my tech help free template from my website, um, and you've downloaded it recently, the sleep function will already be in here because I use it somewhere else. But if not, just paste it right in here at the top of your global module or any global module. 
okay? And in fact, my sleep sex in here as well. But we're just gonna use sleep. Now come back down here to your function. Where are you? Nope, not this thing. We need to go to the message box right down here where we're looping. We're gonna beep and then we're gonna sleep, All right? Beep and then sleep. However long you sleep is up to you. I'm gonna say probably at least half a second. That's 500 milliseconds. Remember, 1,000 milliseconds is a second. So save that. Let's see if the, how that sounds. I don't want 10 though. Let's do it back to three. All right, save it. Let's see how. Let's see how half a second does. That's better, right? You can do full seconds if you want to. I like the. Ha I like the. I like the half seconds. Now, we're working. It looks good. Everything's great. But here's the problem. You click. You're hearing beeps, but you're not seeing the message box. The message box isn't displaying because the code that opens it up, right? If you go into your My Message box, right? This code here that's actually doing this this loop, okay? Um, it's in the form load event. And because it's in the form load event, anything, th this basically stops. The form will not display on the screen until this event is done running, okay? So we're not gonna put this here. We're gonna put it somewhere else. And I'll show you where in just a second. For now, cut this out. Put it in your clipboard. And just so you don't lose it, drop it in your notepad. Here, there's notepad. Where are you? Come here. Boop, just stick it in notepad. Okay. Yeah, I know the tabs are off. Don't worry about that. Um, come back up here. Now we don't need this Y in here anymore. You can get rid of the Y. Why? Because we don't need it. <laughs> and we're gonna run this code somewhere else, but we have to tell it somehow that, yo, dude, you gotta do some beeps. So we're going to say in here, temp vars, hey, Adam, here's another use for temp vars. Temp vars do beeps equals how many beeps? Name, value, one. Okay. Now, who's going to run that beep situation? Well, it's got to be an event that runs after the form is finished loading. I like to use the timer event. And there's a trick you can do. You set it so that the timer interval is zero so it doesn't run after this goes off so it'll basically run it right you set the timer interval to something small like again half a second so a half a second after the form loads it runs the timer event the timer event will do the three beeps and then shut the timer off i've covered this in a couple of other uh videos including my one where i show you how to do flashing text you know flashing backgrounds that kind of stuff it's the same kind of technique Okay, so after this guy goes, we're gonna now say me dot timer interval equals 500. That's gonna turn on the timer event. Okay, when the form loads, doesn't matter what you put in design time because it's gonna get set to 500 right here. Now we go over to the form timer event, right? You can either go back here and go to the properties and find on timer over here, or you can go in here we're already in the form proper. We're in the form load, right? Drop this down and find form timer. Now we're in the forms timer event. Okay. Now this is what's going to happen after the form loads a half a second later, which for a computer is an eternity, right? So we're going to say we need that Y back, right? Dim Y as along. We got rid of it before. We're going to take that code that we copied to our clipboard. We're going to put it back in here. Boop. Right there, there you go. And now watch this. I'm just gonna select this stuff and go shift tab. Shift tab, shift tab, shift tab, shift tab. Keep it all nice and lined up like that. Okay? But before this runs, we don't run it running a second time. All right, we're gonna say me dot timer interval equals zero. Turn off the timer. All right? So form loads, we need some beeps. Okay? Set it to 500 so that way. Half a second later, the form timer event's gonna run. It's gonna immediately turn the timer off so it doesn't run a second time. And then we're gonna get our loop with our beeps. Problem is, this guy doesn't know what name value one is. So we're gonna grab the temp bar that we had up here and put that there. That's a, a quick, easy way to pass values around. You could use a global variable. You could use a hidden form field. You could use a, a public variable in this form. Whatever, temp bars is great. I love temp bars. Right, Adam? We love temp bars. I know, I know, it's obligatory. There's temp bars. 
covered this before. They, they, they waited a long time for this one. They kept bugging me and bugging me. I'm like, fine, here you go. Pretty sure I mentioned this because we used it before in one of the previous videos. So I'm sure you've probably watched this one by now, but it's Tempfire, so it gets a second mention, people. And I know I've covered the form timer event in a couple of different places. Here's a timer event. This one is to pop up a notice, right? It just runs in the background of one of your forms and it looks for an event. And this is the one I mentioned earlier with the flashing text, right? This guy will just flash on and off like this, right? Anyways, let's see if it works. Ready? Here we go. Debug, compile. Everything looks good. Come back out here. Save it. Close it. Close it. Save it. Close it. Open it. There you go. See, you saw the form first, then you heard your beeps. Let's slow those beeps down a little bit. Let's just slow them down. Let's do this. Let's make them a full second pause. And ready, go. There you go. Same. That's quite obvious now. The form appears first, then you hear the beeps. Now, of course, at this point, I know a lot of you are going to ask me, well, can we play a sound in there? Yeah, you could play a wave file. You could play any kind of, you could play a Star Trek klaxon, red alert, right? Whatever you want. Uh, I know the default message box has um, has different sounds that it plays. So yeah, you can just, you can play whatever, you know, play, uh, you know, ah, 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 I didn't say the magic word. You can do whatever you want. Uh, in the extended cut for this video, I show you how to play wave files in VBA. But that's going to do it for part 10. That's your tech help video for today. I got, as of right now, I got one more part coming up. But of course, uh, this is, let's see, today is, Today's actually November 30th. You're not going to be watching this until like December 8th-ish, so next week. Um, so if I get some cool feedback in the next couple of days, and maybe do part 12. I got one more thing coming up. We're going to do a configuration form where you can actually have a form where you put in the options, and then you hit the button, and it generates the VB code for you to copy and paste into your VB code. It's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. You're going to like it. But that concludes part 10. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, people. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so i do now have a quicker microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no i didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but i'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one 
Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.